so what I wanted to discuss with you is if you're given a set of limits that require, or they tell you what they want to happen, um, can you draw a graph that satisfies all of these at once? And that, that's our goal here. All right. So I'm going to start by drawing an axis. Here's my x, y axis. And then I'll just give you some advice on how to proceed. So the first thing you can do is any limit that says x goes to infinity, or this is actually supposed to say x goes to negative infinity. Sorry about that. Those two limits save for the end. I would do those last. Okay? So don't worry about those. Something like this, I'd probably do right away. Because this is old notation. This is saying that when x is 3, y is 2. So this is like saying the graph has to go through the point 3, 2. All right, so I'll go over to 3, up to 2, and put a solid dot there. That's all I know. OK, <clears throat> let's start considering these other limits. Now I'll go for this one. This is saying the limit as x goes to 3 of f of x is equal to 1. Now, let's say a sentence in terms of x values and y values. It'll make it easier. In other words, this is really saying when x gets really close to 3 on the left and right side of 3, then the y values get very, very close to 1 on the left and right side of x equals 3. So we can draw that by, by doing this. We can say, OK, here's x equals 3 right here on the x-axis. Go up. We'll put a hollow dot there. And on the left and right, I'll put little wings. I'm calling this like a dot with wings. And if you notice, um, if you were to put your finger on those little wings and ask yourself what the y value was, you'd notice those y values are close to y equals 1. Okay, so that's why I'm drawing a hollow dot with wings. Now, what's sort of interesting is um, this picture already reinforces the fact that a limit can exist even if at x equals 3, the y value is something else, like 2. So notice at 3 itself, the y value is not 1. But on the left and right side of 3, the y value is very close to 1. And that's what a limit promises us. All right, so we can check these two off. These are done. Okay, let's keep going. This is saying as x approaches negative 2 from the left. So we're going to go over and find x equals negative 2. There it is. And specifically from the left side, the y values are going down to negative infinity. So here's negative 2. I'm going to draw a dotted line here. And what I know is if I come in from the left side, the y values have to drop down to negative infinity. That's what that limit is promising me. So then we look at this one. This is saying as we approach negative 2 from the right, so x values like negative 1.9, negative 1.99, are giving me y values that are also down very low, around negative infinity. Okay. Sort of a fun thing to think about. If you really look at these last two limits, you might think, wow, there was no reason to write them like that. I could have written that in a much more compact way. I could have just said the limit as x goes to negative 2 of f of x is equal to negative infinity. And the reason I can do that is this red limit I wrote here on the bottom is saying from both sides, right? And we know on the left and on the right, both times it went to y equals negative infinity. So we could have written that in a much more compact way. All right. Now, lastly, let's go look at these other limits up here. So as x goes to infinity, y becomes negative 4. So what that means is I move out really far to the right on my graph, my y values are leveling off around y equals negative 4. So the graph has to do something like this. It has to level off just above this <coughs> horizontal asymptote. That's what we call that. Okay? We call that an HA, horizontal asymptote. By the way, oops, sorry. There we go. Um, this other one over here, this one here is called a VA, a vertical asymptote. Okay. And then lastly, this one here is saying as x goes to negative infinity, y goes up to infinity. So that means this part of the graph, as we go really far to the left, has to shoot up really high up to y equals infinity. So the last thing you should do now is try and connect things where you can. So for example, you have this part of the graph down here that's not connected to anything. Well, I can bring it up and connect it to this left side of that hollow dot. Okay? I couldn't connect it to any place else because if I tried to bring it around, for example, if someone tried to do this, well, now you're failing the vertical line test. It doesn't make any sense. So the thing has to be a function when you're done. So make sure you connect carefully. And then this one here can come down and connect to that. Right? Now, sometimes people make a mistake and they say, oh, I'm going to take this solid dot and connect it down to here. 
But now you've created something that doesn't pass the horizontal line, the horizontal, I'm sorry, the vertical line test, and it's not a function. And some people say, well, just don't draw the other part, just draw this part. Well, that's still not correct, because if we look at this graph, what we notice is when x is over here, maybe at like 3.01, and then I trace up, well, y is close to 1 and it's close to 2 on the red graph. And that's not correct either. Again, it's failing the vertical line test. So you don't have the option of connecting to that solid dot here in this problem. You have to connect like this. Clearly, 